we've got an awesome video for you today. Today we're doing the top 10 cards for Commander from the Doctor Who set. I like this set. Uh, I, 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 I really like a lot of these cards that are in this. So without further ado, let's get into it. Honorable mention, reverse the polarity. It's an instant for uh, blue and one. Choose one, counter all other spells, switch each, your, each creature's power and toughness till end of turn. Creatures can't be blocked this turn. Lots of blue decks play three mana counter spells with upside, like dissolve or dis dissipate, especially in commander. Uh, reverse the polarity offers three distinct modes, two that can affect the board. Counter spells with extra modes are very nice, and here we can play offense, defense, and even counter storm spells and its copies. There's where it's at right there. It stops people from storming out. Very, very cool. But then also, you can also affect the board with it as well. Number 10, Vashta Narada. I absolutely love this card. One black and two is a 1-1 one, one alien horror. So he's so he's considered a horror, so he can go in uh, Captain Ingathron decks, blah, blah, blah. He's a destructible. He has Shadow, which I absolutely love. Shadow is one of my favorite mechanics from the uh, Tempest block from 1997. Uh, nobody plays Shadow anymore, which is uh, sad. This uh, it basically makes your creature unblockable. He also has Morbid. At the beginning of each end step, if a creature dies this turn, put a plus one counter on Bastion Narada. So, you've got an indestructible guy that gets bigger every turn, that's unblockable. You could put some type of infect package or something on him, and once he grows to a certain uh, level, you could just start taking out players every turn. I like this card a lot. Number nine, Quantum Misalignment, Blue and Force of Sorcery. Create a token that's a copy of target creature control, except it isn't legendary rebound. The shenanigans that can be uh, done with this card are very, uh, very interesting to me, especially with other cards like Master Multiplied, which are also in this list. Uh, this, uh, the, I can't wait to see, see what people start doing uh, with these cards uh, once they start playing them more. Basically, a, uh, a clone spell for five mana that has uh, that uh, happens twice. I absolutely love this card. Next is City of Death. Combined with a Quantum Misalignment, this could also be a very powerful combination. It's a Saga, one a green and two. One, create a treasure token. Then the next five um, Sagas are create a token that's a copy of Target Nonso Saga token you control. So. Paired with uh, a card like uh, Advara Hellkite, you could really go crazy with this card. Also paired with Quantum Alignment, Misalignment, you could, this, this card could really go crazy. Number nine, the Master Multiplied. He's Rakdos and four, four, three, Myriad. The Legend Rule doesn't apply to creature tokens you control. Triggered abilities you control can't cause you to sacrifice or exile creature co tokens you control. Master Multiply basically overrides all the downsides of mechanics like Myriad because you won't need to sacrifice the tokens you get until the end of the turn. Uh, mechanics like Myriad and Encore get better. What's more, the tokens produced by the Master uh, survive and make more copies on the turn after. Like Scoot Swarm, once it gets going, it's hard to stop without sweepers. I uh, love this card. Number six, Ominous Cemetery. I like this card because if you have a, uh, a worldly conduit or conduit of worlds and a crucible of worlds, and you can keep looping this, this, this is a really good card in lands matter decks. I'm a cemetery. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm this, I, I have a friend that uh, pronounces uh, ominous omnius. Anyway. Uh, Omnius Cemetery is that kind of land design that can go into any one and two color decks. Uh, this thing, uh, it says, uh, and it doesn't tap, it doesn't tap, it doesn't come into play tapped. It says, uh, tap it, uh, add a colorless five, tap it, exile Omnius Cemetery, target creatures owner shuffles it into their library. So basically, you have basically an unstoppable effect uh, that you could, if you could keep looping this, you could uh, basically exile the uh, worst uh, permanents on the board for your opponents. 1v1, if you're head to, uh, head to head with somebody and you can loop this, uh, it's gonna be very hard for them to play through this. So um, I really like this card. I like that it's 
a colorless because it's going right into my Eldrazi decks. Eldrazi decks have uh, a hard time uh, with removal. They're, they're, they're getting more removal spells, but uh, this is one more. You can put this in your uh, Eldrazi Unbound deck or your Oogie deck. Uh, go check out my last uh, video on Eldrazi Unbound. You can put this in there and basically exile creatures, and if you can loop this, this would be a very, very strong card. Number five to 10th, Doctor, I love this card. Is it in 335 LLZ? LLZ is uh, let's go in French. Whenever you attack, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a non card. Put three time counters on it. If it doesn't have to spend, it gains to spend. And then timey wimey, seven colon, time travel three times. Activate only as a sorcery, so you basically take the suspend counters off. If you have a way to manipulate your deck, this is going to be a very, very, very strong card. And you don't have to, it's not a hit trigger, it's whenever a creature attacks, it doesn't have to be the doctor, it could be any, anything else. Whenever you attack, exile cards from the top of your library to you exile a non-land card. If you have deck manipulation, you could put something like uh, Omniscience or Unfara Hellkite or something crazy monstrous up there. And um, you could keep doing it every turn and these suspend counters will tick off and boom, you are gonna be running away with the game. Number four, River Song's Diary. This card is very, very, very strong. Nobody else is talking about it. I can't believe it. I can't believe that this card may have competitive uh, EDH uh, capabilities it's uh, it's only three mana, so second or third turn you can put this thing out. It says imprint. Whenever a player casts an instant or sorcery spell from their hand, exile it instead of putting it into a graveyard as it resolves. At the beginning of your upkeep, if there are four or more cards exiled with River Song Diary, choose one of them at random. You may cast it without paying its mana cost. So you get this thing out second or third turn. Uh, in competitive EDH, people are going to be playing tutors and all kinds of uh, cheap, powerful sorceries and instants. And this card gets even stronger if you're in a large pod. As soon as you put it out, it's going to start vacuuming up all of the instants and sorceries that are being cast, which means they're not going to go into your opponent's graveyards. So it stops them free from reusing them. It stops them from using those spells in, in some kind of count. And then once per turn, you can play one of those spells for free. So you're going to be able to... Uh, either tutor or ramp or bounce or draw. It, it, th th this card is very, very strong. Nobody else is talking about it. I absolutely love this card. Very strong. Then we've got Displaced uh, Dinosaurs at number three. It's a definitely a very strong card. It's capable of building one heck of a board. Turning every historic permanent you play into a 7 7. This dinosaur gives artifacts, sagas, and legendaries much more utility. So, Displaced Dinosaurs, this uh, effect does not come cheap. It's two green and five, but that's nothing in green. As a historic permanent enters the battlefield under control, it becomes a 7-7 seven, seven dinosaur creature in addition to its other types. Very, very, very crazy strong. I absolutely love this card. It's a ridiculous card. Uh, so, treasures, clues, foods. You uh, start making these, and boom, you have got a massive dinosaur army. And Ixalan's coming out, uh, so uh, there's a lot. Of, there's going to be a lot of uh, dinosaur effects coming from that set. So this is a very, very strong card. I like it. I've got uh, Everybody Lives at number two. Uh, a lot of lists have this at number one. I've got it at number two, and I'll tell you why here in a second. It's very strong. It's one white and one. All creatures gain hex, Bruce, and it's indestructible until end of turn. Uh, players can't lose this, can't lose life this turn, and players can't lose the game or win the game this turn. I absolutely love this card. It, it stops people from uh, uh, comboing out. It stops, uh, and if you want to save your board, you could do that as well. Let's say you've got a better board than anybody else, and they go to board wipe. You can stop that from happening. Uh, this is uh, the card that's getting the most hype out of the set. It's not every day that we see a two mana spell that not only protects your creatures, but also the players. You put this on Isochron Scepter, and it's gonna be crazy, crazy strong. It's able to completely stop an opponent from winning. It's the perfect com uh, combo denial tool. So, everybody lives as number two. 
lot of lists have it as number one, but I've got it as number two because, in my humble opinion, I think that the Cyber Controller is the number one card in this set for Commander. Just, just hear me out here. One black and two and X. Legendary artifact creature Cyberman. When he enters the battlefield, each opponent mills X cards. That's not one opponent. That's each opponent mills X cards. Put all creature cards built this way on the battlefield face down under control. They're two, two Cyberman uh, artifact creatures. Artif other artifact creatures you control get plus one, plus one. So, he's an artifact creature lord. He's three, three. But when he comes out, he, if, if, if I, I can't, I'm going to build a deck around this guy. I don't usually, uh, I, I was very excited when I saw this. I'm going to build a deck. I don't, of course, I don't build decks around all the generals uh, that uh, come out. So when I see a card that I want to build a whole deck around when I, to commit 100 cards to this guy, that, tell, that, that shows you how impressed I am with this card. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put infinite mana combo abilities into this thing, like a Metal Worker and um, Basalt uh, Monolith. Put all of those infinite combos in there, mana combos, and when those go off, boom, you basically win the game. It's in black and blue, so black has the, uh, the, is the color for tutors and counter spells, and black has the best way to remove creatures. So you could tutor for your infinite mana pieces, uh, stop your opponents from doing other things with counter spells, play your infinite mana combo abilities, and basically just win the game. But even if you don't do that, if you still put out a, uh, a, a big, I think that this card is very, very strong. It could potentially be a tier commander. Uh, this could uh, potentially be played in competitive EDH, in my humble opinion. I will be building a deck and doing a deck tech on this card very soon. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed my top 10 Doctor Who cards. We will see you on the next Commander's Day.